Say, what up, say? One time for the hometown, I got love for it, that's real. Yeah. Two times for the haters, man, cause I know this how this shit feel. Three times for my family, dog, cause this shit I'm paying. Welcome out. back, guys, to the Matt Couture Report. We got another episode, and we got another special guest in studio today. This is my boy, Red, Big Red. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, thank you. Cool, dude. Thank you, man, for coming in to do this. Absolutely. absolutely. Yes, man, I appreciate it. Um, we're going to have a cool discussion today. We're going to talk about some life stuff, life experiences, spirituality. Um, I think it's going to be cool. It's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. So before we jump in and have Red do his elevator pitch, we're going to jump to a sponsor and then we'll be right back. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, Holsher Ranch Group has you covered. With a dedicated team and a passion for Texas land, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Visit HolsherRanchGroup.com or call 325-899-1403 to get started. Holsher Ranch Group, making land ownership dreams come true one acre at a time. Hey guys, hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're going to jump into it now. So Red's going to do his elevator pitch. Uh, so hit it 30 seconds, who you are, what you do, what you're about, that kind of deal. So my name is Andrew Hamilton. I go by Red. Um, right now, I am working for a stock auction company called Producers here in San Angelo. Yeah. And um, I cannot uh, describe enough or in the best words, how awesome that place is, man. I love it, dude. It's, it's something different to me. It's something that I don't know anything about, but I'm oh, learning. Wow. Yeah. Um, I grew up in, um, pretty much East Fort Worth, uh, okay. Dallas area. Um, ended up going to high school out in McKinney, which is North of Dallas, yep. but I'm a city boy, you know? Okay. So, um, I'm getting used to living out here and, um, doing stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's wonderful, man. I enjoy cool, it. Dude. It's great. Yeah. Um, but I guess, something quick about myself I mean, you know i got into um uh the bible when i was incarcerated and uh that's something i would really like to talk about today man um that changed my life changed yes. it for the better um i helped me find myself it helped me find others and it helped me find peace man and that's that's really what i'm about these days you know i don't talk yeah. about god a lot because people tend to run when i say the You're word right. god um, if, especially if they want to hear it, you know, some people will listen, some people don't want to hear it at all. Some people are eager, you know, I just got to find the, the audience and, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, today, um, I can reach a few people and, um, just kind of explain that, uh, you know, we're, there's hope. Yes, there's hope, man. And I found it in the Bible. Maybe you can too, but, um, just find a spirituality and find a reason to be here and a purpose is pretty important for us. Dude, for us that's all. cool. That's great, man. I love that. Um, all right, so let's do this. So um, first, I just want to know a little bit about your background because I don't know anything about it. Really. So you grew up in Fort Worth, you said. Yes, I uh, Went to high school in McKinney. Uh, what was uh, your early life? More of a middle-class family. Uh, my dad was a coach and a teacher. Oh, cool. Um, which was very cool, man. Um, we got to do a lot of football, be a lot of par uh, part of a lot of the high school stuff going on. Um, the only thing about that, though, that it still kind of bothers me to this day, but I've come to terms with it. He was gone a lot. And if you know anything about Texas football, yep. especially through high school, if you're not winning, you're you're out of there. So we moved yeah. around a lot. Yeah. Um, I was not in a school for longer than two years oh. until I got to high school. And that yep. was the most time I ever spent in one school. Wow. So that was that was different. Um, I mean, I didn't know anything else, so um, I didn't realize what the effect it had on me till later. You know, like, yeah. I didn't really have an established um, group of friends. Uh huh. Um, I had to change that every once in a while, and um, you know, it was it was interesting to say the least. Yeah. But uh, my mom, she worked, and um, she was always around. She didn't really discipline us too hard, you know, which probably became a problem in the future. I was but just going to ask you about that. So, so how were you disciplined? I wasn't. I kind of got Seriously. to run around and do my own thing, yeah. you know, up, up until about <laughs> the age of 13. Was their style of, did they have a style of punishment, like grounding, taking something away, or or was it so, like a, a yelling at you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
before adolescence, I, like I said, I just remember my mom telling me to do stuff and I would do it, but I don't know if that's really the truth. You know what I mean? I, you'd have to ask her because to be completely honest, I don't remember a whole lot of my childhood and it's weird. I didn't have a terrible one. I had a great one, Yeah, but uh, maybe it was the, the, the drug use later on in life. Right. kind of kept that from like yeah. solidifying in my mind and maybe maybe we're not meant to remember everything but um yeah. anyways I, th I think that we were decent i know that we were hellions at times for sure um i had two brothers oh okay. so um that 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 is what it is anybody who has boys you know yeah you know, we can be rough but um yeah so i'd like to think that we're pretty good but once i hit adolescence no nah, man you can tell me to stay home you want to ground me or what it doesn't matter i'm out the door wow. i'm doing whatever i wanted and um I would still come home and I didn't do anything too crazy till I got older, but, um, you know, I probably could use a little more discipline, yeah. but my mother loved us with all her heart, no matter what at all times. Yeah. And th you know, that was great. I cannot explain enough how much I love wow. her for that, man. Cause, yeah. uh, we screwed up a lot there towards the end, you know? And yeah. as, when I say the end, I meant the last 20 years. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, yeah so she was that good. That reminds me because like I can relate to that. Like I wasn't necessarily disciplined in a particular way, really like before adolescence, hmm. uh, not really spanked or anything like that. And, but what, what happened is the sort of the parenting style that my dad had, it was to to kind of give and i don't know if you've heard uh, shane talk about this in class but it's real similar to that which is like uh there's two options you know you can uh you can go out and go to the party um but here's here's what's going to happen you're gonna have to deal with the consequences so it was, it was sort of like you're gonna have to learn by experience hmm. uh so it took longer for me i think to to uh, understand that there are consequences for your actions no matter what your actions are um but it also taught me like that no matter which decision i make although i'm in control of that uh i'm gonna have to pay for it if hmm. it's not a good decision so it's interesting you know um so i can relate to that but what about like for you uh, when you were an adolescent, did you did you start drinking and smoking weed? Like, when did all that start for you? Uh, my thirteenth birthday was the first time really? I smoked pot. Yeah, you smoked pot before you drank. I did. Whoa! I did. Tell me about the experience. So I just remember feeling real sleepy and kind of just out of it. You know, it wasn't who did you do it with? My older brother. Okay, and his friends. Like a joint or like a. Yeah, I believe. No, back then it was Philly Blunts and Swisher Sweets. Okay. Remember those? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably was inhaling yeah. or something, yeah. you know, like, and then the second time I was out of there, dude. Oh, I was, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Basically nap time, you know? Yeah. And then eventually I built a tolerance and, of course, then I was able to uh, find, I guess, um, a positive with it, you know? Uh -huh. it, it made things fun, man. It made me laugh, dude. I remember laughing and laughing yeah. all the way up into my, you know, my late thirties, laughing Dang. and laughing. Yeah. And there's some, I, I think there's some healing, you know, going on right? behind some of that, yeah. you know, but um, here in Texas, it's not legal. So, yeah. you know, they have their, their thoughts and their, their right. feelings towards it. Right. But, um, I lived in California for a little while and I lived oh, in did you? Colorado for a little while. Dang. So were man, you smoking, uh, when you lived there uh, with a medical uh, yep. weed card. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So uh, in California, I didn't necessarily need a medical card because everybody was smoking. So I didn't even have yeah. to purchase it. But um, there's a lot of dispensaries there. But in Denver, all you needed is a driver's license, man. That was really? It. That was it, dude. And I could hit any four or five dispensaries by what? throwing a rock. And that's not even a joke. Yeah. And so with that, is it, can you literally light up a joint on the sidewalk in public? What's the rule with that? So now the rules and laws are different. I don't, I'm not, I'm not hip to what those laws and rules yeah. are. But then when I was living there in 2017, that area, um, they, people were smoking often and you could smell it everywhere. It just wasn't. It wasn't as, um, it, there hadn't been enough years behind it for it to be as like, um, widespread. Like there okay. was, don't trust, like, I mean, there was a lot of people smoking for yeah. sure. I just, it was just more casual. Now I think it's like, just there's things unheard of. Like there, I think there's smoking bars and I think there's yeah. like, there's like little, um, uh, what I would call candy dispensers and yeah. stuff like that that sell bud to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like you, know you don't have to go to the store anymore. Yeah. What's that? Is, so I've never been to a dispensary uh, except 
for when I went to Amsterdam. Um, I was in Germany, but we went to Amsterdam, oh. uh, my ex-wife and I. I mean, I wanted to do the, everything that Amsterdam offered, you know, the, the red light district, the prostitution, you know. The Tour de Amsterdam. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the, the coffee shop. But anyway, so we find a coffee shop and uh, we dispensary or whatever, you know, and, and I was thinking I had this. Uh, I had it in my mind that like it was like kind of a sneaky thing. Like you go in and you get coffee and you buy the weed from them and you're kind of down here like smoking it and you or pass like it. in a back room. Yeah, type. or like a exactly. And so when we walked in, it was like a Starbucks. And so there were three lines and there was the counter and behind the guy was like all this different weed. <laughs> and I get up there and he's like and people are like yelling and screaming and like he was fast and he goes you want pre-rolled or you want you want to roll it yourself and i was like what and he's like do you want to roll it and he was like all like irritated you know i was like i guess i'll just take one that's already rolled you know <laughs> i was stressed out yeah i know i was thing people were laughing and smoking and passing weed and um it, it was it was real interesting, man. It was it was uh, I just wasn't expecting that. Was it like that when you go to a dispensary, or can you oh, not smoke at yeah. the dispensary? Yeah. So when I was there, there wasn't like smoking rooms and stuff like that. But you could like take a tour of um, like their grow rooms and see different. Um, I guess you'd call them species or yeah. whatever uh, of plants and uh, be a part of that. Or you can just go to the main room where they're selling. Like you said, it's kind of like a Starbucks. Yeah. You know, you go in there. There's drinks. There's there's pre rolls. There's yeah. there's flour. There's stuff that I still remember remember who I am. Dude, you know I know. What I'm saying? Like, Not hasn't for... it gotten so potent? <laughs> yeah. So there is a very specific time where I smoked a dab and um, Dude, I had no idea where I was. I, I didn't heard know. that's crazy. I, I couldn't tell what city I was in. I moved around quite a bit. Remember, I was letting you know, telling you. Yeah. And I had no idea what city I was in. I it had to like- that potent? Yes. Dude, I had to like talk myself like down from like Dude, this way crazy space. Yeah. Pretty scary. Pretty scary. Wow. Yeah. So, so you liked smoking pot. Then yeah. That was kind of a thing you did. Yeah. yeah. And I will, I'm not gonna lie. I wish I could smoke pot now, but Nothing wrong with that. Know, yeah. the state of Texas says no. And right. I have to accept that exactly. you know, as part of being yeah. a grown up. So, yeah. What about, so what about drinking? When did that, when did you start doing that? So I started drinking not long after. Yeah. And then uh, dude, I uh, just, all the hard stuff pretty much just fell in right after that. Like the really? rave scene was pretty popular, you know, so I did, did, went to some shows and the what scene? The rave. Oh scene, yeah, dude. Okay. The the giant parties where there's dude. just loud music and people going crazy. Yeah, and I went beautiful to a really women cool wearing nothing in, and, in Austin. Oh yeah, I've only been to one. Yeah. But the the need and, and want to use drugs to 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 heighten my my life experiences yeah. stuck. You know, yeah. and that's unfortunate, man, because I chased that for a right. long time. It's like this. It's a constant like uh, desire to want to alter your mind or mood. You know? Right. So if I was happy, I wanted to feel happier. Right. If I was down, I wanted to feel happy. And sometimes, sometimes I wanted to feel down even more down, yeah. which is really confusing, you know? Yeah. And then you get stuck in this whirlwind. And uh, what we like to call in the rooms is this twist. Dude. It's like, well, I have no idea what's up and what's down, what's okay. left and what's right. My emotions are all over the place. I can't, I can't, you know, find my way out of a paper sack if somebody paid me. So yeah. uh, that's kind of what happens in the end. And that's right. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired one day. But yeah, so alcohol was a part of my early my early years and then, then the drugs and then the, or the hard drugs you know and then um after that i was like you know what i gotta get out of here so i decided to leave texas but uh, what was your uh, drug of choice reason be like hi my name is red and i'm addicted to or my drug of choice is heroin exactly. I, I don't i don't it's want, not necessary it's not necessary and it. i'm not gonna identify with that anymore i get it it's all the same stuff you'll never yeah. hear me say that ever. okay i like that that's cool man yeah and so um, when did you become sick and tired? Like what ha what led to that and, and what happened exactly? Man, a long time before I was incarcerated, a long okay. time. I just was in it, man. And, um, heroin's one of those drugs that, man, if you decide you want to stop, it won't let you, man. It will not let you. Yeah. It's a very long and drawn out process to recover from heroin. Now I've, I've done amphetamines. I've done them all, you know, yeah. but, um, for me, heroin did not want to take its hooks out of me, wow. you know, and I wouldn't let it either, dude. It was rough, dude. It was yeah. a rough experience. So how I ended up becoming sober was I did a three-year stint in TDCJ, man. Yeah. And when I came out, dude, I was a lot better of a person, man. Wow. When was that? What year was that? That was recently. I got out last year. Was it drug-related charge? Or yeah, what? absolutely. Okay. Wow. So tell me a little bit about that experience in TDC. The TDCJ, man, yeah. that was crazy. Um, 
but overall good so yeah. i started off in my county i spent some time there before they could figure out all the paperwork where they wanted to send me i think they wanted to be spend most of my time there anyways mm -hmm. um and then i ended up at um a unit called Formby out okay. in west texas you might be familiar with no. it it's it's somewhere near abilene i oh, believe okay. i believe it's up there somewhere yeah um, and then after I did that, I went to, um, what they call is, um, save P S A S A F E F something like mm -hmm. that. But anyway, so what I did with my time was, is, um, back to being sick and tired, being sick and tired. So before, like, so before I was incarcerated, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, um, for some reason, dude, I was collecting Bibles, like nobody's business, never even opened one. What? But before, but when I got out of prison, I went home and I was looking through all my stuff. I had like 15 to 20 Bibles. That's interesting. Very yeah. interesting. So yeah. they were calling me, man. They were like, that's, well, that's weird. knocking yeah. on my door, you know? And I just didn't realize it, but I was collecting. Had them. you ever, uh, before that, uh, read the Bible or done nope. any kind of uh, Bible study or scripture? Nope. Okay, didn't grow Whoa. up in the church. What? Didn't spend any time in a church ever. That's fascinating. Um, but I can still hear my grandmother's voice. Um, have you gone to church? Have you read the Bible? Oh, yeah. Have you gone to church? Have yeah. you read the Bible? And maybe that was part of it. You know what I mean? I bet. She that planted seed. that seed, dude, you bet. and it was in there deep. So, like, when I was having issues something inside me was telling me hey man if you got problems this uh -huh. the answers are in here so before you know you started to to get into the bible and um and all that uh did you have a higher power did you have uh did you grow up with any kind of belief in anything like that i did okay um my parents were very 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 loving my mother still is my father he passed back in 2017 but great people man and they shared a lot of love they shared a lot of really good loving experiences with us and um before i even really looked into the word man my my mother and my father have me all the way in on love man love wow. so i believed yeah. in love you know i just yeah. wasn't sure how to show it the best i could you okay. know yeah and um maybe maybe there were things that i was doing you know my friends would be able to tell you what i was like growing up i still i still think that i was a knucklehead but um you know a lot of people that know me thought that i was a pretty good guy and yeah i think that i still am i just had my rough spots you of know? course but uh love man i always believed in love yeah that's cool that's like a fundamental law of the universe. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yes. It really is. Yes. Yeah. Like it's, uh, did you pray at all ever? Or was it just this, it, your higher power was really just that was, was love, right? It, it kind of drove you and, and was responsible for certain decisions you made, I'm sure. And well, if I was having tough times, I always had food, I always had shelter, I always had my mother around. My, my dad was gone a lot, but he was, at the end of the day, he was providing. He was, you know, I had good friends. I had a decent family around. And um, in the end, it's like I, did, I didn't know that I needed something else. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just thought that, like, things were supposed to fall into place for I whatever get it, reason. Yeah. But, like, truly, I more or less didn't have any actual guidance. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, like, I didn't know that I should be seeking, and I didn't know what I was looking for or what I would find. I just didn't know. I didn't really even think about yeah. it. I was just existing more or less, you know? So, yeah. so prayer, no. Okay. Uh, Bible studies, no. None of that. But, okay. um, like I said, I was shown a lot of love, and yeah. that 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 held me together for a while. Absolutely. And then when I became an adolescent, dude, oh my goodness, things spun way out of control. My emotions were crazy. Oh, yeah. uh, the people I was hanging out started to lose their stuff too, you know. But but there was always an answer, you know, and, and smoking mm -hmm. pot and drinking, you know, yep. up into the other stuff that tended to be uh, what I gravitated yep. towards. So, and so back to TDC, mm -hmm. you you weren't were you, did you mostly keep to yourself? You're pretty private, or were you linked up with any kind of uh, you know, gang or anything like that, jail gang or prison gangs or anything like that? Or? So what I chose to do is what they call fly solo. I decided to just nice. spend the majority of the time with myself. Now, wow. There are some knuckleheads in prison, okay? Yeah. I'm sure that you, you can understand that. Um, and in the beginning, I chose to, to I don't want to say isolate, but to kind of just sit back and watch, right? I figured that'd be the best way to learn. Yeah. And um, it worked out for me. Um, what I did is I spent a lot of time reading. I saw, I cracked the Bible open. I was like, man, there's got there's got to be something here for me. You know, right. it's like it's been calling me for however long. And so I started reading. And then what I started doing was practicing what it was talking about, you know, forgiveness, uh, okay. patience, uh, kind words, um, listening, like all these things that that 
you know, our basic principles of the book. And then, and then out of nowhere, man, it's like everybody was like gravitating towards me. And I was able to make a difference, whether it was in, in the pods and small groups. Whoa. Um, I didn't have to join a gang. You know why? I could sit at every single table. Oh, no kidding, dude. Every single one with murderers, you know, rapists, and like, like all these people who've done all these crazy things. And I was welcomed, you know, and they were happy wow. with it. Now, some of them were a, a bit, um, um, how do I say it? Um, cautious because everybody in there has the potential to be either like a, a liar, a snake of some sort, uh, you know, um, a loose cannon, stuff yeah. like that. So like everybody has these, like these boundaries right. that they set up. So like, just like I said, but patience and kindness and, and, uh, consistency was one, one of them that probably got me in those circles because, I was going to do the same thing tomorrow as I was doing today, and they knew that. They, yeah. knew, they knew where they could find me on the basketball court, shooting basketballs by myself, 5 o'clock in the morning, or sorry, 7 o'clock in the morning till noon, and then after that, I would run or work out with the guys, and then in between, I'd read, you know? What would they mostly come to you for at first? Like advice about stuff or to pray with them or no let me let me tell okay. you so like this is how it all this is how people really started recognizing me okay i didn't i don't know i didn't know how to play basketball when i got in there right so i would practice shooting every single day every single morning every single day i would shoot you know and eventually i got to be a really good shot right nice. and, and if you know men men are um uh, they are easily excited with sports, right? Absolutely. So then I started winning stuff and, you know, being good and, and playing the games with them. And, you know, the first couple of games I remember playing with these guys, they beat the hell out of me, man. It was rough, dude. And, and it's like, I, and then I stuck in there, you know, and then yeah. I shoved back a little bit. You know, I didn't like gain any some punches. respect and stuff. Gained some respect, yeah. won some games, um, mm -hmm. didn't freak out on people and they freaked out on me, you know. Oh, so like, oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So all that stuff is like, it played a huge part. And I'm telling you, man, I would watch and time pods and this isn't just me you know these are other people there who also believe in the word and are practicing this stuff you could see like this really radical like far out pod like all of a sudden just what? and people are loving each other sharing with each other Dude. those lines end up falling apart and fading away pretty soon you know that you don't have any hispanics versus blacks versus wow. whites there's everybody's mingling together and yeah. I, this is serious stuff i'm not this isn't just something that i think i saw this stuff right. is happening yeah and it's and it was really obvious and really cool because we're in like this bubble right you know what i mean it's very you know, 70 guys living together, you know, on top of each other. And you can see the change, man. You could see the change. So it became a wow. really huge impact on me because I was watching it in front of my yeah. own eyes, right? Yeah. Man. So when that was happening, I mean, this is the first time in your life that you've done anything, been a part of something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so what did you think of that? Like, did it did, did it feel like a, like a calling or God was speaking to you? What did it feel like to you? It had to feel pretty. It special. felt like I'd finally gotten home, and yes, and like I was able to relax and find peace, dude. I would sleep like a baby. Now, there, this is a little back, about a bit of a backstory from all the trauma I had caused towards myself back in my addiction, dude. I, everything that ever bad that's ever happened to me, I did to myself, yeah, or I did to somebody else, yep. right? So before I got in there, I had these really crazy dreams, man. I was having night terrors and. I'm telling you, man, it, it, these demons were dragging me to hell, and I would wake up screaming and hollering and fighting, and you can ask my mother, man. Did you ever been... have sleep paralysis? Yes. Dude, I want to talk about that in a little bit. Sleep paralysis is no joke, Dude, and it's, it's not horrible. fun. Yeah. My dad used to think that I was in there just having a weird dream, and I would right. beg him. I was like, come in there. Yes, Try and wake me up. Me up. Yes. I'm sounding like that, and that's yes. me screaming for help. Dude, but you more know exactly what it is. Yeah. Right. So um, anyway, so like I was having these problems with demons. So like that was another thing I started looking for. I was like, man, the Bible talks about demons. You know, I'll get in there, and like it's like I, I quit looking for the negative, and I found all this positive. So that was another way to okay. kind of help. I mean, I started sleeping like a baby yeah um i felt like i was at home even in a a facility with walls and you know chains and and barbed yeah. wire and sh you know the sheriff and all that um dude i finally found i felt like i had gotten home so oh. i i found a piece in there with all that chaos and i was able to help transform you know um some of uh the other guys lives without wow. them even knowing it yeah you know um after a while some of the guys were help asking me to help with their gd and stuff and we'll talk about that a little later 
But um, then I ended up volunteering for the the unit at Formby to help some of these guys get their GED, man. Whoa, and that's that's yeah? extremely rewarding. Yeah, dude, awesome. And and, and those classrooms were crazy because it's all hectic and crazy. And there's like three or four of us over there, like talking amongst each other, like trying <laughs> trying to learn. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was crazy. Wow. But some of them got through, and that was for very rewarding. That's cool. But uh, yeah, so I felt like I got home, man, and I it it was it was really a big change for me, and. Um, you know, it did transform my life. I was able to touch some other people's lives, you know, through 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 just talking. And and I, like I said, I don't really like to use the word God. I will use it, and every time, every once in a while, you will hear me say God and talk about Christ and and Buddha and Muhammad and all cool. that stuff. And and well, when I started, oh, I forgot to add, when I started looking in the Bible, I was looking everywhere. I was looking at any spiritual book really? I could find. So the I Tao, did that too. Buddhism, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Muhammad oh, yeah. and the the prophet, mm -hmm. all that stuff. I was looking for whatever I could yep. get. Yeah. And I found that they're all really talking about the same That's thing. That's right. Exactly. The just, Quran is actually a lot like the Bible. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Well, it's the first few books of the yeah, Bible, I believe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah so yeah so i found a lot of peace there and uh um, yeah. what i what i end up finding is that i just like the bible god talks to me way like he's dude i'm telling you man he is talking directly to me and it's very very specific That's very what we often talked about last night yeah so like hearing the i've voice. talked about this before and, and it's like uh, being able to to hear God, you know, yes. and that's something I've worked on for the past like few years, and I've always been kind of I struggle with it because I can never tell if it's it's me or if it's really God, you know. Mm. And of course, I don't hear an audible voice, but I have friends and stuff who are have a really close relationship with God, and they they talk about hearing God and they pray about almost everything, every decision, and they feel led, you know, in certain ways, and they hear God and um and the thing is like witnessing that i know they do i can tell mm. like it was certain people i'm like wow i can just tell and so i always thought like man what are they doing that i'm not doing like how when am i going to figure this out like mm. how do i know it's not just me and so uh what i found interesting you said last night was because i've always been told it's that small still voice mm. and i still can't always discern that until more recently but you explained that god communicates with you in many different ways absolutely that's talk about that a little bit so all that's right cool. when you when you think about god you can really break it down as like good orderly direction you know some people aren't gonna like me putting that saying that but um god is basically good right so yeah. good is anything that's good it's not wrong it's not bad right so if it makes you feel icky you should probably do the good thing mm -hmm. right or if if you're having a, a debate with yourself you know it really is you know sometimes the little devil is the little yeah. angel thing and you got good over here and you got bad over here and then that that's sometimes it's that easy but uh sometimes it's it's not so easy so I have found that um, I will get information or messages through li through other literature. Uh -huh. uh, I think the Bible has influenced like more um, uh, more writers, or has an influence on more writers than you could probably shake Whoa, a stick at. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a very popular book. You yeah, know? a lot of people have grown up in the church or around it, and um, it's it's in their brain. It's so For like sure. if you read literature, just any basic text like from people, you will see that pop out. Especially yeah. if you if you know scripture. Now I'm 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 still learning how to how to uh quote scripture so you'll never ask me to do that because yeah. i can't do it but but i do know that it's getting in there like mm -hmm. i spent a lot of time writing scripture down so that, nice. it, that i put yes. it in there right but um anyway so hearing the voice or hearing god talk to me it's like i get it all the time from different different pieces of literature um i will be having a conversation like you and i were the other day mm -hmm. and i will hear somebody say something and it's basically the answer to a problem i've had and maybe that's just me because i'm like an overthinker my brain mm -hmm. is like churning and churning and churning and i will hear a word that just sticks out. i won't hear any more of their conversation but i'll hear something that yeah. applies to what i've been thinking and i'm yeah. just like Bing, you know like yes. that light bulb will oh, come yeah. on and, and it's just like problem solved you know what i mean yeah. and then that's that's another way it communicates with me yeah but yeah but what i once i start reading like in, in the back of every Bible and a lot of in the beginning of some of them, it'll have, you know, if you have some problems with hope or you're having problems with, um, 
anger and stuff like that it'll delete you you know direct you towards scripture and, and a lot of people find peace in that and mm -hmm. i do that sometimes too but it comes from everywhere and then good advice is good advice uh, a really good friend of mine lynn uh we'll call it common sense yeah she, <laughs> she's saying it, she says it's not so common if you if uh, you really think about yeah, it that's true but co good common sense will leave you lead you in a really good direction so like even if um Oh man, I love that girl so much, dude. She'll be talking, man, and like she'll she'll she. I don't even know if she realizes it. She'll say something, and it'll just it'll get in me. Yeah, and then I will spend the next week thinking about it. Wow, uh, trying to find answers to it or like how it can apply to me. And then in the end, she was right. You know, as much as I hate to tell her that, you know, yeah. or admit to her, she was right. She was right. She was right. So um, I think that if you if if you're having a conversation with somebody and 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 maybe the words that they use hurt your feelings mm -hmm. or or make you feel really good, yeah, that's an indicator that that there's something there, yes. right? So then we yeah. need to focus on that, okay. and then through that we're able to to get to where God was trying to get trying to point us yeah, towards. Okay. And then and then you're like, oh thank God. Yeah. So so that man, having it explained like that, I have experienced that. And okay. what it is is it, it's usually people. It's uh people placed in your life at a certain time mm. or a certain conversation and it's an answer to a prayer. It really is. It's like oh okay I hear you. You know, I hear you. And so and it's and I'm so certain about it, you know. It doesn't happen all the time. Like, for instance, I'll be praying about something really specific. Like, lately it's been, am I still on the right path? Because I felt like I was giving, given a, a God-given purpose to do something. Hmm. It was, you know, I've never been more certain about anything in my life. But I do feel like sometimes I stray from the path that God wants me on. So my common prayer is, am I still on the right path? Uh, what am I doing wrong? Like, uh, and I get frustrated because I pray that so often that I don't always hear an answer, you know. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. Something I'm I'm still working on, you know, is, is doing that. But what about? How do you feel about um, church? Uh, you know, meeting with you know a group of people who believe the same as you at a certain time, a congregation. Um, do you feel that's necessary? Effective? um important what do you think you know a denomination all that so when it comes to spirituality these different sects um or these different organizations if you will or different whatever versions uh, whether it's buddhism or it's baptists or it's christians whatever you know um i th i think a community with good orderly direction what i was talking about earlier um is a plus yeah um, people are people. Yeah. People are peopley, Amber. Uh, <laughs> that was a lady over at uh, Journey, man. I oh, love yeah. that lady. Oh, nice. my gosh. Shout out to Miss Amber, dude. What's she your last is name? a rock. I have no idea okay. what her last name is. Yeah. But a great lady. Um, taught me a lot, and I will always hold on to that information. So uh, people will be peopley, and they're going to mess up. They're going to they're gonna fail, or they're going to sin. And it's like, that's just that's just human nature yeah. right so as long as we all have a a plan or a good path i think that's a good thing yeah you know um some people get lost in the sauce yeah. sometimes right yeah. because my god is no better than your god or or their god or whatever you mm -hmm. know whether it's a he she or they um there is the universe and in the universe there is a lot of different possibilities and different outcomes and uh, i think that at the center of that is love and then like what i was talking about earlier it's kind of the same basic principles right yeah i think if you get stuck on some of the little things or the religious dogma if yeah. you will that's that's where you kind of lose um i don't want to call it luster but um i guess the you kind of lose your pep right? yeah i get it you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. you're, you're taking steps back you know that's what I'm right saying? like focusing it, on the wrong stuff yeah, you're focusing yeah. on the wrong thing man it's mm -hmm. like if if good things are happening and people are feeling good and they're they're actually doing the right thing mm -hmm. then that's great man yeah. that's absolutely great now with the 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 church experience i'm still new to it so i don't I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that, man, if you if you make good choices with good people in your life, mm -hmm. good things are going to happen right. no matter what. And then if something happens or you backslide or you fail or whatever, they're going to support you, man, and they're going to be there that's and they love the, you. That's right. That's they're going to be the there key. and love you. Oh, and something that, that changed my life yesterday, there was a girl who graduated from our class, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. 
And um, of all the rooms and all the stuff I've ever talked about or everything I've ever learned, nothing was more powerful than her family being there to see her Whoa. graduate and the love was and the energy and how proud her children were wow. and her mother. That changed my life. Really? Man. I was fighting back tears like Whoa. a mug, dude. That it was is powerful, crazy. dude. And that, and I think that needs to be a bigger part of um, the recovery community is more stuff where the family's involved. And I'm sure there dude, is. you're right. But I'm still new to all this. And it's like that right there. It was like, oh my God. Like, dude, I, that made me want to do so much better better like things so Whoa. that i can prove to my mom especially after that i drug through hell you know yeah me and my brother both we drug her through hell man and she's finally able to chill now but um yeah man dude like it would be really really nice to to um to be able to experience that amount of love and care and uh you could just f feel a sense of pride from all of them you too could. about yeah. her you know and wow. I, where i was sitting i was in between her and her family and i'm telling you man the vibrations were like shaking me you know Whoa. what i'm saying like yeah ooh, like i could feel dang dude i feel like i needed to hear that because you know what i was thinking this is mm. this is bad but i'm gonna be honest okay until recently uh i was thinking man graduation like i'm not gonna invite like family and stuff to graduation from this program you know like it's embarrassing but <laughs> i know it's bad but <laughs> I, I mean, dude i think it's probably because we're guys but i, I think so yeah. like, oh, i don't know i need a pat on the back i know I like that, it's kind of awkward but like you said the more i see of that dude the more i realize how important it is and absolutely. it is something to be proud of man absolutely yeah. man any day it's clean cool. is something to that's be right. proud of dude that's right it's so easy to do the wrong thing yeah but eventually we find that it's a lot easier to do the right thing yeah yeah dude so if you had to pinpoint it for yourself and you might not know but what was the driving force behind your addiction or your desire to use like what what was it you so i so like it, in rehab we talk about there's these stages you know and like initially it was for fun yeah to celebrate and then it was like if i felt bad i would do it to feel good and then over time it's just it became a habit man like this crazy habit i didn't know anything any different you mm -hmm. know and it wasn't necessarily a specific drug it was just whatever i could get my yep. hands on right so uh mood altering like you said just whatever would change my mood and what's weird it's really strange to think that it's like whether i was happy or sad or angry or whatever i was always trying to change i wasn't really embracing my feelings and, yeah. uh, and letting them do their thing right because i was reading this book the other day and it's talking about like these emotions emotions that we have they all of these crazy ones up and down left and right whatever they are they all form the ability to love Ooh. is what this guy was saying wow so if we deny ourselves anger and, and frustration or or sometimes even hate you know but or like uh if we if we're feeling really good and we basically rot we're, we're stealing from that too if you're getting higher drinking while you're really excited you're taking away sure the 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 actual ability to feel something right absolutely like you're trying to add to it but what you're doing is taking away yeah so all of that stuff accumulates into the ability to to, to love right so like for you know love Love includes forgiveness. Love includes um, uh, compassion, like going out of your way to do things for people mm -hmm. that you have empathy for. And there's all these things that go into it. And what we're doing is robbing ourselves of the ability. That's and then, right. And then after that, what happens is like all this weird stuff starts coming up. Depression. Yep. Um, anxiety. Anxiety um yeah psychosomatic illnesses like mm -hmm. uh, i can't like my night terrors and yeah. stuff like that dude it was coming out in all these crazy directions yeah not okay yeah not okay dude yeah that's what that was a good way of describing it it's like a you're like a muted version of yourself mm. you know right it's weird you're just not the full version of yourself because you're, you're like you said you're suppressing those emotions and you're not fully loving right you're like drowning you're, you're underwater and you're, exactly, you're looking dude. up and it's like an obscure version of like God. what's really happening and and you're trying to reach out and ask for help or or, or invite people in but they don't want to get in there you yeah know what I'm saying you're drowning just yeah. walking by that's a good yeah. analogy sometimes like they that. step right <laughs> over you yeah i like that sometimes Whoa, they, they look at right you over. and they're just like mm -mm, i'm not i can't even can't even get involved yeah and that's the truth yeah. man you have to sometimes or they have to sometimes yeah whoa it, you know the other thing that we kind of briefly talked about that i i usually ask people about who who read the bible and study scripture there's a few different things that i have questions about um contradictions if you will mm -hmm. uh so one of the big ones is um 
the idea that there's two different schools of thought and i've looked into this there really are like theology theologians and like biblical scholars it's kind of divided uh and it's the idea that uh there's soul sleep and then the other school of thought is that as soon as we die we go straight to heaven hmm. and if you look throughout the bible uh scripture you'll find different um instances where like for example christ is on the cross he's dying uh and the thief next to him basically uh says i believe in you you know i i want to you know you i want you to be my lord and he's like you will be in paradise with me today hmm. and so the thought is that when they die they're going straight to heaven um and other places in the bible you'll see that as well but then i think it's in, in paul and he's writing uh some letter but uh the idea of soul sleep comes into play and it says something to the effect of um whenever we die our our souls go into like this sleep and um until the second coming of christ mm. and then it says the dead will be risen first um so it's like well, which is it like are, when we die are we in this soul sleep like just completely dormant and unaware of anything mm. uh or do we go straight to heaven and get to be with our savior and loved ones you know I hate the idea of soul sleep. It bothers me, dude. Well, how do we know this soul sleep isn't just to us? It, it's no time at all. Yeah, that's you what my grandmother saying? told me when I asked her. She goes, well, even if it is, it'd be like wa walking through a door or blinking. Right. Like you, you just wouldn't know. And then you, Boom, as soon yeah. as you knew it, you're, you're getting called up. So that's true. But I just wish it was more clear you know I, I mean i think that's part of the the magic of religion or spirituality if you will um because we don't know everything yeah and the more our stupid human minds try to wrap our heads around everything we just make things worse so yeah. i think it's better just kind of letting things lie sometimes now i am huge on getting the answers i will read read, too, read read dude. read you know ask these people over at journey i spent all day in a book trying to find answers dude, to what's wrong like with me, me. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? or what's going on with the guy next to me too because yeah. i'll even put my stuff on hold and be like all right what's his deal you know <laughs> don't you feel like you're supposed to work with people like yes that? even though you love this job yeah Yes. I feel like you are, dude. Well, here's the thing is I do work with people. There's all okay. the guys that I that I work with, and it's like they don't know it, but I plant little seeds oh, okay. the best I can. I treat people really well. The new guy on the cruise, you know, today I spent some time with him, let him feel at home, and it's like I try my best to um, to be a good example, man, and, and, and that's something I said to you yesterday. It's like sometimes – it's not about what we say or or what we know. It's just being a good example and, and, and following Christ that way. I heard yeah. a, um I guess it was a proverb somebody somewhere. Anyway, somebody said preach the gospel every single day. Use words if you have to. So I think interesting. What I got from that was just be a good example, yeah. man. You don't really have to say much. Just That's true. be a good example. Yeah. And people will follow That's suit, right. dude. They will follow suit no matter what. Yeah. As long as you're a good example, they'll be like, hmm, I want some of that. Or I want to I want to be as uh, positive yeah. or as confident. Cause when you when you start to find this sense of joy and confidence and love and all that stuff, dude, you're walking like you're a 10 foot bulletproof tank. You dude, know what I mean? Yeah. And you feel that way. And and this isn't a negative version, you know. Yeah. This is the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like right. I have truth inside me, and I speak the truth, and I walk the truth, and I'm a good person. That's that cool. there's a lot of power behind. Oh that. yeah, that. that's mm. cool. And people will follow that, and they'll yes. and they'll come towards it. And sometimes it gets to be a little overbearing, you know. And and people will be they won't they won't even realize it, but they're coming to you for for answers. They won't admit it. Yeah. But they're but they're trying to spend some time around you to yeah. see what it is that you got, and it's like, yeah. Sometimes right. I'm wore out. It's like I don't have anything oh, to give, yeah. you know, or mm -hmm. or I'm not sure how to how to um, help somebody with some stuff that they got going on. But in the end, I'm learning. It's not it's not always about having answers. Sometimes I learned this through Job the other day. It's about um, uh, suffering with others. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, even Christ suffered. He he knew his friend. Um, who's the guy um lazarus mm -hmm. was gonna die he knew he was gonna die i mean he's, he's god he knows everything yeah. you know and, but he still sat there and chose to cry and, and weep with the, with his That's a good friends example. and family you know what yeah. i mean god chose to come into the human body so that we could connect to him through christ right, right? that he experienced everything that this world has to offer through that body mm -hmm. right yeah. so he he didn't have to yeah 
but for us to understand and 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 get closer to him and have right. a better relationship he he did a lot of things through Jesus man yeah and you could probably find a lot of those same lessons some of those same lessons and like I said these other uh yeah, spiritual backgrounds or whatever yeah. you can but but I it's uh, just just what I gravitate for same here well, I wanted to ask you though, uh, the near death experience you mm. had. So I'm fascinated with NDEs. Uh, so there's, uh, there was a point, uh, where, so I lost my best friend when, mm. uh, in 2013 to suicide and a uh, bunch of philosophy, uh, near death experience accounts, uh, personal testimonials. And, um, what I found interesting about near death experiences is whether you think most of them are made up or they're true or whatever it is fascinating that um near-death experiences the characteristics or the All chrono- very similar. Or, yeah the chronological order of what people experience is very similar mm. um it's weird there's a lot of evidence that's kind of hard to argue with but what happened to you so with me it it, it seemed very brief i don't know how long i was um on the other side so so to speak i guess is anyway so i had overdose it was my very first overdose and i was unconscious and not breathing for quite a while um for me what happened was i i found myself and this was not this couldn't have been a dream because in a dream you have color there's sounds there's, there's a lot going on i found myself in the desert in a valley if you will you know there's there's rocks on both sides and um it was like time had stopped. Um, there was no sound. There was no um, no air. No nothing blowing. Like you know what I mean. Like yeah. it was just like a vacuum almost. Yeah. It's like there was there really wasn't much going on except for me walking. You know, and I'm yeah. looking around like what the hell. You know what's going on. And then like off in the distance, I see. Um, remember, my father passed away some years before this. Um, off in the distance, I can see my dad, kind of like a blurred ver- version of him. And you'll a lot of people have experiences of of, of um, a deceased um, family members sure. visiting them. Yeah, right. Sure. So, so I see my dad, and he's coming towards me, and I am super stoked because I haven't seen him in a while. I'm so yeah. happy to see him, and I'm like ecstatic. And like I remember, I'm like, you know, I don't, it's almost like I was floating, but I'm like trudging through like sand. But anyways, like he's coming, and I'm excited, and I now realize like he is not happy. My dad is not Whoa. happy at all. Yeah. And then my attitude changes, and I'm oh god, like what's going on, you know? And and I just remember as he gets close to me, I'm like reaching out to hug him, and uh, he just grabs me by my shirt collar. And he just gives me this real stern look, doesn't say anything, and he just throws me Whoa. down. And I wake up in the hospital, yeah, bawling my eyes out, looking for him. Like, where is he? He was just here. Wow. I'm asking all the nurses, where is he at? Where is he at? Nobody's here. Nobody's with you. And um, so, like, I kind of calm down or whatever, and I get up, and I'm looking around. And I, I'm in, it's like, uh, after that experience, I was up and off. I was out of the bed. I was walking back and forth through yeah. the hospital. They're like, what are you doing, sir? Get back to your bed. You know, like, I'm in a, uh, what's it called? Not the emergency room, but um, uh, where they care for you afterwards. Um, but anyways, yeah. so I'm out of my bed wandering around, and I and I walk up to these two people. They're looking at me way crazy. They're two um, um, EMTs or whatever, and they're looking at me super crazy. And I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, like, how y'all doing? Like, this weird, like, um, energy I had. Mm-hmm. And they're just, they're like, I can't, they're like, I can't believe you're up right now. Like, I can't believe you're here with us still. And I'm like, I'm like confused at what they're talking about. These are the EMTs that brought me back. Oh, So yeah. apparently like I was out for a while and um, it didn't seem hopeful or whatever, yeah. but somehow I made it back, Whoa. you know, Yeah. and there I was. And that that's pretty much it. Now, for me, it seemed like it was like that, but I think through through discussing with them, like what was going on, that I wasn't doing well for a long time. Wow. I, the people who I was with didn't really call an ambulance till way later. You know what I mean? They were yeah. dragging my body around, trying to figure out what to do with me. Dude, you know that's what I'm saying? So messed up. Yeah. Man. So it's like there's a lot of wow. a lot of things that went into that, but. For, what do you think he was trying to communicate to you? So here's the thing. Um, I don't believe it was my father. Okay. Okay. I believe yeah. that it was whatever it was, my guardian angel or whoever looks out for us, you know, whatever you believe in, this this entity of some sort 
was just not was not happy with what I was doing. Was pretty upset that I'd made it that far, you know. And I think it was more of purgatory because I wasn't in heaven. I definitely wasn't on earth, and I was somewhere beyond, right? Yeah. Well, th- th- wherever they came from, they weren't happy. They had to come get me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think they were they 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 showed a form that I could relate to yeah. that I would run to, right? So like more or less, I think you know they talk about walking towards a light or going into yeah. a light. Like I didn't have that. I was I wasn't done yet apparently you know what i mean and and they knew that but it was like they were frustrated so whatever these spiritual beings are they have emotions too man wow they're not robots they're not just bees you know what i mean or uh what is it called worker bees right they feel they feel stuff too yeah and i was able to sense that because you know it was real dude and it was as real as you are sitting right here with me now and i will never forget that ever and uh that's just pretty much how how it ended was just him just tossing me back into this this life yeah back into this body yeah man that's crazy dude pretty wild man it's like it's weird like i've always wanted to it's it's not a good thing to say obviously i don't want to come close to dying but having a near-death experience is to me is almost like a like a privilege in a way you know Hmm. i would just like to experience that i don't know something that surreal yeah you know what i mean like it was very powerful for you you know what i mean it stuck with you and it was this experience that meant a lot to you i don't know i just I don't know, dude. It's just fascinating to me. Um, well, I think you. So, so I think that you can, and you can do that wide awake. And and the closer I find myself getting to God, and these experiences I'm having with these other people, and these these really radiant, um, um, like feelings of joy. It's like that is just as empowering yeah. and just as magical. I yeah. promise you. And and you might feel like you need that or that little tap on the shoulder, which I've gotten more than a few times. So there's somebody looking out for me and they communicate with me on a regular. But um, let me tell you what, man, sometimes it feels like a burden because like you said, am, am I doing what am I supposed to be yeah. doing? Is this the path I'm supposed to be on? I feel like I'm letting down this this higher power that I have yeah. no idea like what to do with myself. But the more I learn is just stay the pace, fight the good fight, do what you're supposed to do. And eventually all that stuff is going to turn out, you know? Yeah. That's good. So you yeah. can experience a really overwhelming sense of, of um, I guess, meeting your higher power through other people yeah, and okay. connections. I see what you're saying. And then you mentioned something. I want to talk about this real quick before we run out of time. But you said uh, we were talking about heaven. And you said you believe that there's three realms or what did you say? Three. So, so Tell was, me about that. So in my small education of the Bible, um, it talked about three different heavens. And, and, and I might need to be corrected here and one was here on earth the other was up in the clouds the firmament and then there's another where god lives right heaven okay. i assume yeah or maybe he's beyond heaven i don't know but know, yeah. there was three of them right so like or three and um i'm not exactly sure how all that plays into it but i do know in buddhism there's different realms or there's different states of being yeah. after you pass depending on how how well you've done or that's how right. what kind of uh how centered you are yeah you will get sent to a different that's level right. so the ultimate goal is to uh to work realize our way god up. or realize the self through meditation and exhausting worldly desires and exactly and the idea is that you, you reincarnated and you're making it's like climbing the rungs of a ladder you make progress your consciousness is making making progress until you get there. Um, I, yeah, dude, I have a, a buddy who was a, a Buddhist monk for a while, and he he actually studied Ooh. under a, a really famous uh, guru named Sri Chin Moy in New York. Okay. And so I find, I find that so interesting. Meditation in and of itself is really fast. Like the, the physiological stuff that's proven to happen in meditation is mind blowing. Well, there you go. There's an outlet for you there. Apparently I'm, you can project yourself into wherever it is you think say, you need man. to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell me this. So what are um, three things that you're genuinely grateful for right now in your life? My family, my friends and God, man. Nice. Cool. And what makes you the happiest? What brings you joy? The most joy? Yeah. Reading scripture, man. I will not lie to you. That is my go-to right now. And um, what that allows me to do is experience life a lot more fully. Cool. Um, it, it teaches me to be grateful in all ways, even in suffering, which is a very 
interesting idea to yeah. the, oh thank you you know i have yes. um uh chicken pox thank you god you know yes. um, i stumped my toe important. thank you lord you know because yeah. then through that you know we built it builds character That's and it right. builds the ability to uh we get closer to god absolutely yeah. man it strengthens that relationship yes. so yeah. stuff like that i find all that in scripture and you can like i said you can find all that stuff in in these other um uh, major religions yeah it doesn't have to be the bible yeah, man. i like that you you have that viewpoint I've always felt that way too. It's interesting. Um, and then this one I've, I've never asked, but I want to ask you: uh, What do you think your purpose here, is here on Earth? What's your God-given purpose? I think about that all the time. I, yeah, I don't know yet, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with working with people. Yeah, and then just like I said earlier, maybe just being a good example and and showing people that um doing the right thing and being a rock myself gives yeah. them hope to do the right thing as well yeah dude that's cool nice this was great dude thank you man well, i mean we could go for hours i think we could we got to get to class pretty soon though yeah dude that was good um so all right guys that was um that was red right there and that was a cool discussion dude i mean we talked about everything your upbringing drug use being incarcerated scripture uh all kinds of stuff man that was cool uh thank you guys for joining us as always remember guys if you or your business is interested in being a sponsor for the matt katria report podcast or anything else that we do we'd love to have you please reach out and we can tell you uh more about that all right guys take care we'll see you next three times for my family dog because the shit and paid our bills and i get four times my net worth from a year ago with no deals did it all